or I point or we're pointing them to scripture and and it's just inwardly it is in, it, it is encouraging them with what they are what they are dealing with and so our gracious words can be spoken to others and used by God's spirits to transform their trial into triumph and and their sorrow into joy that they might understand, they might realize that, hey, somebody cares. Have you, have you noticed? A lot of people just want to know that people care about them. That's uh, one of the things that I, I hope our church has realized, that when people come into to our, our, our services, that, that we're not just greeting them and, 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 and welcoming them because they're here, but we are greeting them and welcoming them because we care about them. Because they may have issues, they may have difficulties, they may have problems that, that are overwhelming them and, and they need a friend or they need someone who cares. Don't ever look at anyone who comes into this congregation and say, well, you know, they've got it all together because most people don't have it all together. But look at them as a soul that is in need and... I can be a friend to them. I can be a help to them. I can be one who ministers to them with my speech. In Luke chapter 4, verse 22, it says this about Jesus. And you think about it, because Jesus is our example. It says, And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. That's not me saying that. That's what the Bible says. That they, as, as the, the multitudes, as they observed Jesus Christ, they were in wonder at all the gracious words that came out of his mouth. What comes out of my mouth? When I'm on the basketball court, what comes out of my mouth when I get fouled or I get hit by someone? And yes, I do play basketball. What comes out when things aren't going my way? When the copier breaks down and the bulletin needs to be printed? When the door is not working right and I run smack dab into it? What comes out of my mouth when I stub my toe on something laying in the floor? Is it gracious? Is it building up? Is it that which was needed? Colossians, Paul says in verse four, verse, chapter six, chapter four, verse six: Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Our speech needs to be seasoned with salt. Why does Paul use salt here? Because salt was used to uh, to put on meat to retard the corruption. And, and it would uh, also add to the taste, to the flavor. And so we must identify the corruption in our lives and seek God's help and grace to speak words that will impede wrongdoing. Rather than uh, 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 carrying on and saying, well, I'm not following that politician or I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that and, and this is awful and, I, and I'm just going to do my own thing and do what's right in my own eyes. Well, that's a, that's, the Bible says, no, don't do that. Do what God says. And I think one of the reasons we see what we see today is the church has not stood up. The church has not been salt but the, the church has been corrupted in itself. And we need to turn back to the Lord. We need to repent and we need to uh, put on the new man. Put away the lying. Put away the, the anger. Put away to giving place to the devil. And, 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 and speak truth. Speak words of grace. And stand for that which is right. We need to give words that will heal and help, words that will be spiritually edifying and strengthening. And our words need to fit the need of that individual. Don't just enter into conversation and blow them off, but how can I minister? That, that's the mindset that we need. How can I minister to this person? 
whether it's the teller at the bank or the, the, the cashier at Walmart or my wife or my kids, how can I minister to them? Because we need to watch our mouth. I need to watch my mouth. That it is speaking for the glory of God. Our Father, thank you for your word, for this privilege that we have to come together this morning. I thank you that uh, your word speaks to my heart. And Lord, I look and I hear myself. And I see this great area of wrongdoing in my own life. I pray, Father, for your help. I pray that you would set a watch before my lips. That you would keep the door of my mouth. And I pray, Father, that if there, is, there are those here this morning who are struggling with this issue, Father, that as we are praying this morning, that they too are confessing their sins, that they are calling upon you to help them, to guide them, to give them the words that are needed to make the right choices. And Father, I just pray that you would work. I pray that if there is one here this morning that does not know Christ, they may have civil talk, but do they have a heart that has been changed by Jesus? I pray, Father, that you would work in that heart and bring them to that understanding of Jesus Christ as their Savior. We thank you for what you're going to do. We praise you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing all for Jesus this morning. A hymn of invitation. The Lord is at work in your heart. We invite you to come forward. Uh, perhaps you have a decision you'd like to make known to our church family. Uh, we encourage you to come as well. Um, and if you're here and do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, we urge you to come. You might be able to show you how you can know Christ as your personal Savior today. All for Jesus. song are, are needed in our lives. Let my lips speak forth his praise continually. May Jesus Christ be praised in all that we say and do. We trust that the Lord will use this, his word in our hearts this day. That we will go forth speaking his praise to those that we come in contact with and letting them know of his greatness in our lives. 
Uh, it's so good to have you here. Those of you that are visiting for the first time, we're glad to have you. Trust that the Lord will encourage you and help you uh, through uh, our uh, service. And just pray that the Lord will use it mightily in your life. Uh, just a, a note, uh, our family will be traveling this week. And so um, Brother Larry is going to be filling in for me uh, next Sunday. And so uh, uh, and we'll have uh, a bulletin instead of the the. TV screens, uh, but it'll have the words of the song in there for you, and uh, and uh, so uh, that'll that'll work out a little bit better, I hope, as well. But pray for us as we travel up to the the uh, I, I call it heaven, uh, East Tennessee, and then uh, and then down to. Uh, 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 I guess you could call it Hades, Atlanta. Uh, uh, but uh, pray for us uh, just for safety and travels. And uh, we were visiting family and getting getting with our, our folks and everything. So pray for us as we, we do so. And we'll be praying for you. And, um, and um, email me if you need anything, and, and I'll get back with you, uh, even though I'm gone. So uh, we're here for you. Uh, let's pray and uh, ask the Lord to help us uh, today. Brother Scott. Scott Lampson, would you dismiss us in prayer?